Yo, what's up everyone? How's it going? Thank you for checking out my weekend review video. My name is Raymond Jarvis. I'm a forex trader. In this video, I do for you guys every week. I like to show you what I have on the radar for the upcoming week. But more importantly, I like to break down the charts and actually show you why I'm viewing the market the way I am and show you the analysis behind it. Uh, I've seen a lot of videos here on YouTube that don't necessarily break it down for you. They kind of just show you a setup and I always believe that isn't really valuable to you guys. Um, I know it wasn't valuable to me when I first started learning how to trade and watching all these videos on YouTube, um, just looking at setups without the person actually breaking it down for me. Um, you know, I don't want to say there's a lot of dishonest or non on no, no dishonest. Sorry, I'm horrible horrible English. Um, there's, there's a lot of dishonest stuff out there, um, but there is. Um, you know, it is what it is. I'm not gonna cover it up. I mean. To teach his own, um, but for me personally, I like to actually show you why I'm viewing the market the way I am, as opposed to just showing you some random setup, just to show you some random setup. Like I said, you guys don't get any value out of that, and I actually don't get any value out of it either. So we're gonna break down the charts. Um, what I have on the radar for this upcoming week, uh, we're kind of going over bracketing the market. Um, we're gonna be looking at a couple pairs where we're kind of trading in a channel and different ways I look to attack the market when it's in that channel, and different ways to look at it when it breaks that channel and how we predict where the market to go to and how to get involved. Um, on a, and a, for another pair on the Euro Yen, it's gonna be an update off of last week's video. If you wanna link to that video, it should be the link in the top right hand corner. Um, we, I kinda went over that pair and understanding the difference between a good trade and a bad trade and being okay with taking losers. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's a part of the game, it's a part of trading, it's a part of what we do. Uh, understanding that you know, not every winning trade is a good trade and not every losing trade is a bad trade and understanding the difference between the two um, I also go over, you know, trading structure with that pair and different things to be mindful of if you're going to be a pure structure trader um, in regards to when, if you're making, melding that with your prediction in trading. Hopefully that makes sense. It'll make more sense once we get in the video and I actually break it down to you. I just kind of wanted to prepare you guys before we got in there. If you guys want, you can look in the description box below, jump ahead to any pair you want to in case you want to look at something in particular. Um, and if always feel free to reach out to me, my links and stuff are all down there too in regards to my social medias. You know, I always love when you guys reach out to me, so please feel free. And while you're down there, you might as well hit that like and subscribe button and that little notification bell, that way you don't miss any of my future videos. And without any further ado, let's hop into the charts. All right, so let's hop into the first pair we're looking at, and that is the Pound New Zealand. So looking at the Pound New Zealand, kind of seeing on the daily, um, I use, I use a uh, Multiple time frame analysis where I start off on a daily and work my way down. If you guys are new to my videos, that's the kind of the way I go about breaking down the charts. I'm looking here at the daily, kind of seeing what happened recently. You can see right here, price came up, formed a double top, bearish divergence. So where did that double top occur? If we look left right here, there is a level of structure directly looking left. Um, I also recommend you guys, you know, if you're new to my videos, always draw out our levels of structure in the market. This is a level and this is a level as well. Um, so when we go down to the four hour, you get a clear view of what I'm talking about. This is that double top that formed. Um, you can ask yourself, okay, well, you identify where the level of structure. You have, make a prediction, okay, double top formed, where am I predicting the market to go next? If this double top does play out, the next level in regards of this neckline and get it broken, the next level I'd be looking for price to come back and retest is this outside level of structure, not sorry, not outside, this inside level of structure right here. The reason why is because you can see right here, this was a nice level of resistance before the market broke out to the upside. So I would expect this level to get tested next. If you're predicting that level to get tested, next you ask yourself, okay, well, how can you get involved? Um, there's a couple different ways to get involved at this point. Um, if you are a 2618 trader, you can look for some type of 2618. What that is, is you can wait for the market to come down, break this neckline, and then look for a pullback into this into this double top and then look for a 618 retracement from this level down right here, 618, boom. And then you can look to get involved short right there. And your initial targets would be a retest of the lows, possibly secondary dark targets could be down here at a retest of those previous levels of structure. Um, so that's one way to play this um, if you are looking to play that. Um, as a double top, me personally, um, another way you can play this is if you go down to the hourly. What you can see here is you can actually see we were actually, you know, you can actually bracket the markets. What I mean by that is you can have your levels up here tested and then, sorry, bracketed off and you can have this lower level test, this lower level bracketed off, sorry. Um, and what it looks like here, you can see the market has pretty much been bouncing between these two levels. Not surprisingly, the market came down. This was a beautiful three bar reversal. And if you look left, we were at this level of structure. You can see the market tested it a few times before it broke out to the upside. You can see this was actually a level of resistance right here as well. So not surprisingly, the market came down um, from the three bar reversal, reverse off of this level, 
occur same thing occurred up here. Um, we had a nice bullish candle, strong bullish candle um, in regards to where the close occurred. And then we had a beautiful three bar reversal with a strong bearish candle thereafter. And the market pretty much reversed um, off of that point. So if you were inclined to play this as a, when the market is channeling like this, what I personally like to do is I like to either look for pattern trades or I play it off of levels of structure. Um, it looks like we almost had a bat pattern right here. It doesn't look like it quite hit the 50% retracement. If it did hit that 50% retracement, that would have been a beautiful bat pattern. Um, two bar, uh, sorry, a two, two target winner. Um, but unfortunately, you know, sometimes it occurs, you don't necessarily hit that, hit the ratios. And that's when it's, Good to have a secondary reason for entry, and what that second, what I mean by that is, if you, and this is what I've, what I've learned in my testing of patterns, and you know, using in testing of structure, a lot of the times you're, you're just gonna miss out on that, on that, not retracement, but on the, on the right fibs to get involved if there was a bat, the bat pattern right here, and that's why it's good to have a secondary reason like a three bar reversal or a double top type structure based setup if you are, if you aren't able to get involved in this type setup. Um, you know, it, it, there's just different ways, of, different ways to play it, different ways to play structure. And that's the, the main two ways I like to play structure. I like to either or structure in regards to whether we're in a channel and bracketing up the market. I'm either looking for patterns or I'm looking for structure trades at these levels. Um, so you could be looking for some type of double bottom down here, playing it for a channel. Uh, what I mean by that market come down here, goes over bought. You can look for some type of, you can look for a higher, higher, higher close. If you're looking to get involved aggressively with the three bar reversal, you can look for a double bottom and look to play it across the channel again. And what this does is it gives you a clear area in the market where you can place your stops. And that's honestly what I love. I like to play stops where I know if the market goes there, then my prediction was wrong. And that's completely okay. Um, so what you could do, ATR right now is about 30 pips. So 30 pips below there is about 60s. So we'll go 58s. Um, that you can get a pretty decent risk reward on this trade if you get involved right here. Say this is your stop, you get a double bottom down here somewhere. You can get involved and you're say you want your initial targets to be at a retest of the highs. Boom. You can look for something like this right there. Color that in. And you can have your stops somewhere down here. And you can see the risk reward on this is pretty is pretty insane. Um, so much so that you could even, if you were more a little more conservative, you can even have initial targets maybe at a at that 50% retracement or at this little level of structure right here. Let's see if that lines up if we do come down here. Boom. Somewhere right there, like a 50% retracement and look for secondary targets at a retest of the highs and then look to do the same thing over again. Uh, retest of the highs close, something like this. That would be something I'm, I would be more inclined to play it as um, only because I'm I'm not, I don't want to say I'm conservative with targets. I'm a little more conservative than other traders where I like to take targets, get a piece off, and then play the rest for a retest of the highs or whatever it may be. Um, another way you can play this type of um, channel or this type of, you know, like bracketing off the market. If you aren't a counter trend trader, you're more of a trend type trader or you're, that's what you're looking for, what you could do is you can just wait. You can wait for the market to break either one of these levels. And that's similar to the 2618 we were talking about at this level. Um, once the market breaks this level, if you're a pullback trader, you can predict your, the next level to get tested is down here at about 194.60s. Um, so what you could do, coming down to the hourly, similar to the 2618, um, you could wait for the market to, oh, sorry, wait for the market to break this level. Look for a pullback into this level right here. The reason for that is because this level, which was support, now, well, I don't want to say now will become resistance, but it's likely to become resistance. That's what you'll notice a lot of times in the market, what, pat, what is past support becomes resistance and vice versa. So you can wait for market to pull back into this zone, look for some type of double top entry to get involved. It gives you a nice clear area for you to put your stops somewhere right here. And then you can look to play it for a move lower to this level right there. If you're looking for, if you're more of a pullback trader, not really a structure trader. Although I would say this is a structure trade, but, or, you know, whatever, you, you get what I'm saying. Um, so that's one way to play it if you're looking for, if we do break this level to the downside. If we break the level to the upside, there is a little bit more space um, in regards to if you're looking for a pullback trade. If, you're, if we break that level to the upside, we actually have to go back to the daily to kind of get a view of where our next level of structure is. And you can see that next level of structure is up here at about, say nice even handle about 2200s um if you're looking for that complete move so you can see there that's a pretty uh it's a pretty decent move about 300 pips in there so what you can do wait for the market to come up break this level up here 
boom, you could either play it as a breakout trader or you can wait for a break at that level. Play it just like the way we're talking about to the downside where you look for some type of pullback into this zone. What was once resistance becomes support. And that that is even stronger for me because it was a level in the past that was resistance as well back here. So what you could do, like I said, wait for a nice clean break of this level. Boom. Nice consolidation at the level. Breakout. Look for a pullback into this level and then look to play it forward and move higher. Um, you can once we figure once you get a clean break of that level on our higher time frame, we can come down to our trading time frame. Look for so like I said, some type of double top in this zone, playing it for a move higher. You can double top or uh, maybe some type of what am I thinking about double top or higher, higher, higher close, whatever reason you use for entry or like I said, or breakout trader, you can use that as well. Uh, so there's a couple of different ways to play this. Uh, a couple, it's be interesting to see what happens this upcoming week because there's a little bit of something in here for everyone. Um, if you are a structure trader or you're a um, a breakout or retest trader. So a couple different things setting up for this pair. So we'll see what happens. Uh, with that being said, let's hop on to the next pair. All right. So the next pair we have here is the New Zealand dollar. So looking at the New Zealand dollar, kind of looking at the daily, kind of seeing what's been happening. You can see here on the daily, we've pretty much been channeling sideways um, after this recent break to the downside. When we go down to the four hour, you get a clear view of what that channel looks like. Strata levels of structure. This is a level of structure to the upside, and let's draw it out like as our way down right there, and right here is a level of structure to the downside, where or support it, I mean. Um, so you can see right here, we recently broke this level of structure right here on this candle right here by a pip, it looks like. Um, and now you ask yourself, okay, well, what's going on? What, identify what happened in the market. I'm identifying a recent break to the upside of structure. Predict. Where are we predicting price to go next? The next area level in which I'm looking at for the market to go to is this nice structure level right here, inside level of structure. You can see this is a level that was tested multiple times um, as support on the way down. And it's a nice even handle number right here as well at 7100s. Um, so that's a nice level to look for the market to return to, to at least retest um, if, we, if we are to continue higher. So actually, okay, well, how can I get involved? What are different ways to get involved? When we go down to the hourly, like I said, we know we recently broke this level of structure right here. Ask yourself, okay, well, what can we do to get involved to the upside? Um, and this was actually one of those one of these pairs during the week that was actually a little frustrating for myself uh, because you can see right here, this was a level of structure right here. This was a beautiful three bar reversal that occurred during the week um, that I was not able to get involved in. This was one that I was looking at. I would have loved to get involved in. The downside is it occurred while I was asleep. Um, that's, that's happened at quite a bit this year in regards to when these pairs uh, set up and when they occur in the market, I'm just not awake at the time, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. But as you can see, it was a beautiful three bar reversal into a level of structure to the downside. Um, and you see the market pretty much reversed off of that level. And so we're trading up here, broke this level of structure looking left, Ask yourself, okay, well, what can you do? How can you get involved? Um, there isn't much right here in my eyes in regards to reasons to get involved. So what I personally am looking for is I'm looking for a nice, clean break of this level. If we can get a nice, clean break of this level, what then I can look for is I can look for a break, look for a retest down into this level of resistance or, or you know, which will become support, you know, my prediction, <laughs> and then look to play for a move higher to that 71 uh, even handle number. Um, let me see if any fibs line up in that level right there and back. Now uh, we have a 1618 a little bit higher and let's see if we have any fibs from this higher level down to line up that level. And we have a nice 50% retracement down in that level in regards to Fibonacci, uh, Fibonacci retracement. So this is a decent level. This is a level I'm gonna be looking at for this upcoming week for it to get tested um, and then see how the market reacts to this level. Because you can see, I'm expecting the market come to this zone. It's gonna be a not a decision point, but it's gonna be an area where you are gonna see sellers step into the market, I believe, um, only because, like I said, this was a level, you can even see it here on the daily where it was tested multiple times before that breakout to the downside. It was tested once, twice, three, four, five, and then the, and then we have this nice, strong, bearish candle to break through that level. So we'll see what happens this upcoming week, but until then, I'm looking for a nice, like I said, I'm looking for a nice, clean break at this level, looking for a retracement back down, playing it for a move to that level right there. Um, and once we get to that level, then we'll, like I said, we'll reassess and see where we're at in the market. Um, I Now looking at it, I think there might actually be a... Cipher pattern as well. We had the 382. Let's do a one, see if there, we had a 127 of X to A. 
we do exactly and we don't close beyond the 1414. Um, so if we do happen to continue higher, this is going to be a bigger one. Probably not anytime well i take that back who knows what's gonna happen this upcoming week um but this could be a separate pattern that plays out later this week we have an x to a a to b b to c and a cdd completion up here at the 786 so that might be something that plays out later this week and we'll see what happens um, if the market does continue higher so yeah that's what i have for this pair and let's hop on to the next pair all right, so the next pair we have here is the Euro Yen. So looking at the Euro Yen, this is a pair we actually were looking at last week in regards to looking to see a possible aggressive right shoulder sell on a possible head and shoulders. Um, you can see right here, the market on the daily, what's kind of been happening. We had a strong bearish bullish candle, I mean. Um, we had a strong bullish candle, strong bullish candle. We had a little bit of consolidation right here yesterday in regards to what the, how the market was reacting. We go down to the four hour. This is, let's draw our levels of structure. As always, level of structure to the downside level of structure to the upside and this is the head and shoulders we were looking at it's not a pretty head and shoulders it's not one you get in like in the textbooks you you see it's a, it was a pretty sloppy looking head and shoulders but the price action was still the same so let's actually scroll back and kind of scroll and see what we were looking at at the time um what i always oh, draw a little we were looking at this level of structure right here as you can see if you were an aggressive trader, this is something you would have been looking at to get involved in aggressive right shoulder sell. Um, and you got to remember, if you're getting involved in the right shoulder, it is an aggressive trade. You're entering the trade aggressive because the head and shoulders hasn't yet played out. So if you're getting involved at this level, you ask yourself, okay, well, what, what's happening? Price is coming up. It's holding this level of structure right here, looking left and holding that left shoulder. So as you see, price continues forward. We never actually got a break and close above this level. You can see right there, boom. Bearish candle, uh, lower low, lower close, bearish divergence on the RSI. This actually was looking like a pretty decent setup. Um, in regards to, like I say, if you're getting involved at a right shoulder, uh, right shoulder sell. Um, and if you're getting involved there, you know, it, if it's a trade that's a part of your plan, if it's a trade you tested, if you trust a lower low, lower close, that is a beautiful setup for you to get involved in. And even when we go down to the hourly, let me scroll back to where we were, somewhere right here. You can see right here, you can see market came up. We never actually closed above that left shoulder. Um, and remember, because this is that this is the uh, the structure zone we were looking at. And we each even had a nice ascending channel. Boom. And then the market broke down off of that level and then came back and retested it with bearish divergence on the RSI again. So even on the hourly, this was looking like a decent looking um, entry signal. And on the hourly would have been a little bit different in regards to where I'd be looking for targets. I would be looking for targets down here at about 12950s uh, because that was our most recent level of structure. Um, I would have been looking to get tested. But personally on the four hour, if you're looking, like I said, if you're looking for an aggressive right shoulder sell, that would have been a nice setup. Um, and this is one of those things in trading, you know, it's always easy to be a hindsight trader, go back and tell yourself, uh, what, what ended up happening was the market broke above that level, stopped it out, um, stopped out the, if you were an aggressive right shoulder seller, and then you would have been stopped out and that would have sucked. But Hey, that is a part of trading. Um, it's always easy to look back in hindsight and tell yourself, Oh, I should have never been involved in this trade. Um, I should have, I should have noticed, Oh, there's, we're channeling right there. I should have, you know, I should have been looking to get the, in the opposite direction. It, it it's one of those things where I took me a long time to realize and understand in my trading that it's easy to do that. It's easy to go back and tell yourself, oh, I should have done this, I should have done that. It's different in real time. When you're looking at the charts in real time, you can only go off of the information you have. And that's why it's so important to back test and have your data and understand what your setup is in regards to how you trade it, what market conditions you like. Because if I'm looking at this personally, this is a good trade. Even though you get stopped out, even though um, the market doesn't go in your favor, you, you know, it, it happens. That, that's something you have to realize in trading. It took me a long time to realize that in my trading that losses are going to happen. Um, you have to have almost no ego when it comes to trading. You have to be okay with losing. I don't, I'm not saying you have to enjoy it, but you have to be okay with it because I've yet to meet a trader who has a 100% system. I haven't met them yet or her. I haven't met them yet. Um, if you know them, please let me know because I have yet to meet them. Um, but you, so you have to be okay with it. Like I said, I'm not saying you have to like it, but you have to be okay with it. You have to understand that losses are going to happen. And this was a good trade. Um, and that's, that's the difference. That was a mindset shift. It took, you know, working on my mentors to understand that a good trade doesn't necessarily mean a winning trade and a losing trade doesn't necessarily mean a bad trade. A good trade is a trade in which you follow your plan. 
you entered where you're supposed to, your stops were where they're supposed to be, and you know whether you win or lose, it's out of your hand. At that point, it's, it's up to the market. It's your plan to do everything before you get into the trade. Um, so for me, this was a good trade. If you got it, that, that was your entry signal. Like I said, everything, it, it was lining up well, just got stopped out. Hey, that happens in trading. Get used to it if you want to be a trader. Um, you're going to lose a lot. Well, I don't want to say lose a lot, but you're going to lose a good amount. Um, so get used to it. Um, so, the, so now you kind of tell yourself, okay, well, you know, are you going to sulk? Are you going to be upset? No, you just erase your charts and you look at what you want to do next. You look at what's happening in the market. Right here, there's nothing really I want to get involved in. Now, what you could do is you can look for this higher level of structure to get tested and look to possibly get involved in some type of counter trend trade. So when we look at the hourly, what you can do is, like I said, you can look for, you see the market came up, broke this level, consolidating right here, forming somewhat of a wedge type type signal, well not type signal, type, type pattern. What you could do is you look for a break to the upside and then you can look for some type of signal in this area, whether it be a lower, the lower close, three bar reversal, double top, whatever it may be, and then you can look to get involved there. The only question I would have, the only the only issues I would have personally with this is where my targets would be, um, because it's such a tight zone uh, between here and here. It's only about 30 pips. I would need a great risk. I would need like a double top where we where we had a you know the double top of form right at the top of that uh, zone to look to get involved and to give me enough profit target potential in here because the furthest i could look for targets is right here at about 130 30 the top of this consolidation zone not all traders trade like that that's perfectly fine some traders will use a fib they'll say hey i'll take a fib from wherever that is and look for the 382 retracement that's perfectly fine but me personally in my trading i look for the most recent level of structure and that's this level right here so i can't personally look to get involved in this um, unless I get a, a perfect entry. Um, so if that's the case, then you know, do I, I just don't look to get involved in a counter trend trade. What I now look for is I'm actually waiting for a break of this level. Once we get a break of that level, ask yourself, okay, well, if we get a break of this level, where am I predicting price to go? We actually have to look on the daily to kind of look further back to kind of see where our next levels of structure are at. So if we look further left, um, you can see right here, kind of trading at this inside level right here. The next level I would be looking for is this level right here at about 133 evens. Um, go further back. Let's look at that. I mean, kind of, I like to actually map out the highs right there and the highest close and the highest wick right there. I know it doesn't look like much here, but when we go down to the four hour, you'll see that we, there's a good amount of distance between here. We have about about 30 60s to about 32 so about 200 pips ish um, if you're looking for that extension uh, so you could wait for a breakout of this level something like this and then once we get a break at that level you know you can tell yourself okay well i'm predicting price to go up and this is the next level i'm predicting price to go to does that mean if you miss out on this initial breakout that initial pullback into the zone that you can't get involved Absolutely not, because your prediction is still for the market to go, to, well, you know, if you're predicting the same way I'm predicting, uh, your next prediction is for the market to go to up to about 133s. So if that's the case, you know, doesn't mean you, just because of, you can't get involved here, you can always look for the market to play its way up, get involved in, on, in type of pullbacks, whether that be some type of, you know, Gartley pattern, bat pattern, pull back into the zone, and then play it for, uh, you're looking, at that point, you're looking for a reason for entry to get long, because your overall prediction in the market is long, that's where you're predicting the market to go to, that's what you're looking to do, and that's what traders mean when they say they're, they're they make a prediction where the market's going to go, and they kind of don't even look at trades in the opposite direction. Um, so, like, if you were involved here, like, oh, okay, let me give you an example of this, um, a lot of traders, when they were telling themselves, okay, well, I'm looking for the market to go here. I'm only looking for long trades. So what that means is if you are a structured trader, you're going to have areas in the market where you're going to have structure, but you're, you maybe not want to get involved because it's not in the overall direction of the market. What I mean by that is say the market comes here, pulls up to this level, pulls off. Okay, so you can ask yourself, okay, well, I'm still predicting the market to go higher. I'm still predicting the market to go to 133s. So then you have to ask yourself, is this a level of structure right here? So once the market does this, you have basically have two levels of structure. You have this outside level right here and this outside level right here. The market comes down to this level, you're looking to buy. Market comes up to this level, you're looking to sell. 
So what you have to ask yourself, if you're predicting the market to go to that higher time frame, do you really want to sell at this level in the market? Because the reason for that is because you are selling against where you're predicting price to go. This is one of those difficult things you have to work out as a trader yourself. Uh, this is something that took me a while to work out myself as a trader, because even though you know, you're predicting the market to go here, this is still a valid level of outside structure because it's a level that hasn't been tested. So are you willing to take a structured trade at this level? I can tell you that you have to decide that yourself, uh, but just food for thought, something to think about. Some traders wouldn't even look at this level to get, to, to get long at, or to, sorry, to get short. Instead, what they'd say is I'm only looking to get long at this level of structure right here, and then I'm looking, to, looking for a break and only looking to get long at any levels of structure along the way. And what I, mean by that, what I mean by that is once you get a break at this level, once you see you get something like this, and now traders might be looking to get long here, get long here, and get long here. That's what I mean by once you pick a direction in the market where you want it, where you're predicting it to go, you only take trades in that direction because then that allows you to possibly look for extensions, look for retests of the highs, and look for the market to go to that overall level where you're predicting it to go. Hopefully that was helpful. That, that wasn't something I really even thought about. I just thought I'd kind of go over because it, it kind of hit my mind at the time. So hopefully you guys found that helpful. All right, so hopefully you guys got value out of this week's video. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button down below and that little notification bell. That way you don't miss any of my future videos. Um, I will see you guys in next week's video. Have a great trading week. I'll see you then. Bye.